Good day and thank you for joining us. So in today's lesson we'll be looking at some analytical geometry. So to get things started let's have a look at some of the equations that we will be using in this topic of maths. So the first equation we'll be looking at which you are probably very familiar with is the gradient formula. So we know that the gradient formula obviously gradient is m that's going to be equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 or you can say it's change in y over change in x um, probably a new formula to you guys now is the distance formula so for distance uh, let's say we're working out from point A to point B so that line would be called line AB the formula goes as follows is going to be a massive square root and that what's going to be inside we're going to have a bracket it's going to be x2 minus x1 and that will be squared this will be added to another bracket which is my bad it is y2 minus y1 and that will be squared as well and all of this falls underneath the square root sign moving on to the next one we'll be looking at midpoint so midpoint the equation for midpoint is going to be x1 plus x2 this will be over 2 and then you'll notice that we have a semicolon here in the middle so obviously because x is on the left hand side we know that this will be the x value of the midpoint now on the right hand side it's y1 plus y2 over 2 and this will be the y value of the midpoint so all we're doing here is working out a coordinate okay cool moving on we'll also be looking at finding whether finding out whether lines are parallel to each other so parallel lines and how do we do that we know that two lines are parallel if the gradients are equal so m1 has to be equal to m2 m1 is basically the gradient of the one line and m2 is the gradient of the other line because remember gradient is the inclination of a line and if the lines have the exact same inclination they are parallel to each other and then the last equation we'll be looking at is perpendicular lines so perpendicular lines how do we know if two lines are perpendicular if they ever ask us to find is this line and this line perpendicular we need a gradient for both of them so we need an m1 and an m2 once again the only difference now is that if we times these two gradients together it should give us an answer of negative one cool so perpendicular lines we need to use two gradients times them together and if the answer is negative one that means that these two lines are perpendicular to one another now let's move on to some application for these equations so we can be looking at this example which should include every single equation that we just went over this will give us a great exposure so it says at the top given pt is equal to tr so pt over here I'm just gonna highlight pt to tr is equal to tr to it's equal to tr right so pt is equal to tr so we know that these two lines are equal um, and qt is equal to ts so qt is equal to ts so they're the same length P is at the origin so P is at the origin we can see it's right here in the middle of our Cartesian plane so we already, we already know that the coordinates of P is 0 and 0 and Q is 3 and 4 R is K and 1 so already we can see we have an unknown value here which is K and S is 4 and minus 3 cool so let's have a look at what they're asking us to find for them so they say yeah it's number 1 determine the so a is co to determine the coordinates of t so t over here we can see is in the middle so what is very important to realize is that they gave us the information that qt is equal to ts so if these two sides are equal on either side of t wouldn't that mean that t is the middle and remember if something's in the middle that also stands for our midpoint cool so we, are cl we can clearly see now that we're working out the midpoint over here so we're going to say 1a 
and we know that we're using the midpoint formula and that's how we represent it over there by MP but we need to say which line we're finding the midpoint of we're finding the midpoint of QS because the midpoint of QS is T which is the coordinates they found, asked us to find so we're going to say MP and then subscript here we're going to say QS so if we can recall our midpoint formula remember it's set up like coordinates so it's going to be X1 plus X2 of 2 semicolon y1 plus y2 over 2. Cool, so all that's left for us to do is substitute in the values. So we are using q and s. So q is over here and s is over here. So what I'm going to do is we will label this bracket over here for q as bracket number 1 and s is going to be bracket number 2. So that's just going to tell us, okay, by Q, this is X1 and Y1, cool, X1 is 3, Y1 is 4, and by S, this is X2 and this is Y2, cool, just so you know how to substitute in and what you're substituting in. So, X1, that is here by Q, that is going to be 3, that's going to be added to X2, which is 4, and that's both going to be put over 2, and then we have Y1, which is 4 plus y2 which is minus 3 so obviously that's going to be subbed in there as minus 3 and this is all over 2 now we can go ahead and carry on solving this is going to be 3 plus 4 which is 7 over 2 obviously we know that anything that is positive times a negative we get a negative so this is 4 minus 3 so 4 minus 3 will give me 1 and that's 1 over so just like that, we have found the coordinates of T. Cool. So we can just say, therefore, T is 7 over 2 and a half. You can choose to write it like this, or you can choose to have it as a decimal or mixed number. Cool. So moving on now, we'll look at 1B. So 1B says the coordinates of... No, sorry, it says 1B says value of k okay so where is k represented it is represented here in the r coordinate so r is k and 1 so let's see what we know about r r is at the end of the line of p t okay so we already have coordinates for p over here and we have coordinates for t so what else can we tell from this well they told us that p t is equal to t r so that from p to t is equal to t to r that means that T is the midpoint of line PR as well. So what we have to do is use the two coordinates that we have to find the value of R. And to do that, we have to re-engineer or try and rearrange the midpoint formula, right? Because we have the midpoint and remember the midpoint is made out of the two coordinates from both sides of it. Okay, so it's going to be made of P and R. So let's just write here we have our midpoint already cool for the x value right because remember we try and find k which is the x value of r so we have our midpoint value for x remember this is the left hand side so let me just write it like this actually we are going to have x1 plus x2 because remember we only try and find the x value of r which is k so x1 plus x2 over 2 will give me obviously we know what the midpoint of these two values are remember we worked it out it's 7 over 2 right that is the x value of t so it's 7 over 2 cool because remember these two lines q and s and p and r share midpoint so that's why they have the same x value for their midpoint all that's left to do now is to substitute in x1 and x2 so x1 we can choose any one of the lines we'll use p as our one value Cool. So this is going to be 1 over here. x1 is 0. So it's 0. Plus x2 obviously being k over here. That's over 2. Is equal to 7 over 2. So we only have one unknown left in this whole equation. So let's solve for k. First thing we need to do is get rid of this 2 here at the bottom. We're going to times by 2 on both sides to do that. And so on the left hand side, all we left over with is k. So k is going to be equal to, obviously, 2 will times the numerator, which is 14 over 2. 
and so k is therefore going to be equal to 7. And just like that we've solved 1a and 1b. So very important thing to note when we're trying to find the value of k, we knew that t was the midpoint of the line pr and we had to use the x side of the midpoint equation to find the value of k because we knew what the midpoint x value was already. So now time to move on to the next one. So next we're looking at number 1c and so that asks us to find the or determine the gradient of qs. So we try and find the gradient of qs. We have been given um, all our coordinates for q and s so we'll make q1 and s2 doesn't matter which way we put it really. So we're going to put in our gradient formula now. So we find the gradient m of qs. Always indicate which line we're using. So it's the gradient of qs. We're doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So our y2 in this case is minus 3. And that's going to be minus by our y1 which is 4 x2 in this case is going to be 4 and that is going to be minus by our x1 of 3. So we get minus 7 over 1. Obviously our gradient now is minus 7. Cool. So that is our gradient of qs. And just like that, we've solved that question already. Now it says in 1d prove with calculation that if k is equal to 7 then QS is perpendicular to PR. So in this case they ask us to find if two lines are perpendicular to each other. So remember the equation for perpendicular lines is M1 times M2 is equal to minus 1. And obviously we need two gradients. We have a gradient for QS but we don't have a gradient for PR yet. So let's work out the gradient for PR first. So we find the gradient for PR and so it's going to be once again y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So obviously they've given us and we've already worked out that k is 7 and this is 7 and 1 then right. So this is r which is 7 and 1. Let me just put this around my different colors so you don't get confused with the example of your 1c. So r is 7 and 1 and we also try to use p, which is 0 and 0. Cool. So we're using those two. We'll make p1 and r2. So we're going to put in our y2 now, which is 1 minus, obviously, our y1, which is 0. And then we have 7 minus 0. And this is going to give us a answer of 1 over 7. So now that we have our gradient here for PR, now what we have to do is times M1 by M2. So we're going to rewrite this equation. M1 times M2 is equal to minus 1. And then we'll have minus 7, which was our gradient we found for QS, times 1 over 7, which is our gradient for PR that we just calculated. And that will give us a final answer of minus 1. And so we can say, therefore, QS is perpendicular to PR. And that is the end of D's example. Now let's move on to the next question. So now looking at 1E, they are asking us to determine the length of PQ. Cool. So we determine the length of PQ. Here we got P and we got Q. We have values for both of those. So we'll use P as 1 and Q as 2 this time. <clears throat> so let's go. We are finding the length of PQ. Now we'll substitute in our equation. Just make some space over here and get rid of that over there. I'll rewrite it a bit smaller somewhere else. This is 7 and 1. Okay, so our equation, remember, we have our massive square root. Then we have x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared as well. Cool. So let's go ahead and substitute in our values. We write the square root again. 
x2 in this case is 3 minus x1 which is 0 and that will be squared plus 4 minus 0 squared so we have now 3 in this bracket left over because 3 minus 0 is 3 3 squared gives me 9 uh, 4 minus 0 is 4 squared gives me 16 so I'll have a square root of 25 which gives me a grand total of PQ is equal to 5 units cool so because it's length we always have to have a unit of measurement if there's no unit of measurement given to us we just use the word units so PQ is equal to 5 units in length now let's have a look at the final question so we're looking at 1F now and it says determine whether PQ is parallel to RS so we're finding out the where the PQ over here, this line here, is parallel to RS. And remember, when we spoke about parallel lines, we know that we need two gradients. M1 must be equal to M2. Cool, so both the gradients have to be equal to one another. So from here, what we're going to do is find the two gradients. Cool, we're going to fi first find the gradient of PQ, and then we'll find the gradient of RS. Right, and we haven't done it up till now, so we'll go ahead and start from scratch. So we're doing PQ is equal to sorry this is the gradient of PQ remember PQ will be subscript the gradient of PQ is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so we'll substitute in our values we'll use P as number 1 once again and Q as number 2 so our y2 is 4 minus 0 which is the y1 and then 3 minus 0. So this is going to be a grand set of 4 over 3 as our gradient for PQ. Now we'll find our gradient of RS. We'll use R as 1 and S as 2. So we're going to once again write out the, the formula Y1, I mean Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1. That's going to be equal to, so we're going to substitute our value, obviously RS. We have minus 3 is going to be minus by 4. And then 4 is going to be minus by 3. So let's go ahead and solve for this. Minus 3 minus 4 gives me minus 7. 4 minus 3 gives me 1. And so our final gradient of RS is going to be equal to minus 7 as our final answer. So with this information, we can now conclude that M1, um, which we could say is uh, PQ, so let's just say MPQ is not equal to the gradient of RS. Therefore, PQ is not parallel cool is not parallel to RS and that is going to conclude this and this lesson thank you so much for joining me guys I hope that this helped you understand your analytical geometry as a nice bit of an introductory lesson um, have a good one